Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parables today are about mustard and leaven. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. In this message, we explore the meaning of two of the shorter parables Jesus told. Jesus is well known for saying to his followers that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough to move mountains, or for saying a small amount of leaven causes the whole lump to rise. It was his way of saying it does not take much to change the world for better or for worse. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all included these parables in their gospel. They must have been among the favorite stories that Jesus told. Now keep in mind that because they are stories, they teach only one simple principle. So it is not necessary for them to be told exactly the same way each time. Jesus adapted his stories to help the people to whom he was speaking understand the point that he wanted to make. Parables are not meant to convey scientific information. Debating the size of a mustard seed is to miss the whole point of the parable. Jesus was merely repeating an expression in common use in the first century. When people wanted to describe something as being very small, they compared it to the size of a mustard seed. With this in mind, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 and 32. Now, to get an idea of how small a mustard seed is, a hundred seeds, mustard seeds, would easily fit in the palm of an adult's hand. It was shocking for Jewish people to hear Jesus say that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. They thought the kingdom of God was a massive force sweeping away everything in its path. <clears throat> Jesus did not look like or act like a political figure about to bring in a kingdom capable of overthrowing the kingdoms of this world. They could not see that the tiny seeds that Jesus was planting in his disciples would become a movement with over 4 billion followers. They could not see that the message Jesus preached would reach people in every country around the world. They could not see that whenever the message of Jesus is preached, people have their standard of education raised. Children are fed and protected. Women are elevated. People are healed and set free from demons. What a great thing the kingdom of God is. Now, one of the most frequent questions Jesus asked his disciples when they faced difficult times is, where is your faith? His point was to encourage them to believe they already had enough faith to do everything that Jesus was asking them to do. This is what he had in mind when he said, For truly I say to you, if you have faith, like the grain of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew chapter 13, uh, Matthew chapter 17, and verse 20. Whenever you are facing what seems to be an impossible barrier to overcome, be encouraged to know that it only takes a small amount of faith to solve the problem. The faith you have right now is enough faith to face your challenge. 
And the main point of the parable is that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough to change the world. Those who travel to the Middle East know that mustard seed bushes must regularly be cut back or they will easily overwhelm the landscape. And the point of the parable is that what God is doing right now is not fully visible. It may seem insignificant, but it is powerful. You'd be surprised how many people write to me about a message I posted months ago, even more than a year ago. They write to me to say how much a simple idea helped them. In this parable, Jesus is the planter. He plants ideas the size of a mustard seed that soon grow into powerful spiritual movements. I heard about a man returning from the Middle East who tried to bring a bag of mustard seeds home with him to America. His bag of mustard seeds was immediately confiscated by immigration officials who said, if those seeds get into American soil, the growth can never be stopped. And that's exactly the point Jesus was making. The message of the kingdom of God looks very small right now, but nothing will be able to stop it. Last night I had a vision of speaking to a young man from another religion about Jesus. And after a while he looked up at me and he said, I don't need to be afraid of death anymore. The simple idea that Jesus planted in that young man's thinking changed him. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus promised that those who believe in him will have everlasting life. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. John chapter 6 and verse 47. I understood that the spiritual seeds that Jesus had planted in that young man's mind took root and began to grow. I felt the presence of Holy Spirit come over me. His power overwhelmed me, and I fell down in the Spirit. This is the power of a tiny mustard seed. Then Jesus went on to say, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. If the religious leaders of the day did not like Jesus saying that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, then they were horrified that Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like leaven. And leaven is the word found in the Bible for yeast, that substance which causes bread to rise. And most people know that leaven was one of the substances that had to be removed from every Jewish home before Passover could be celebrated. And this goes all the way back to the first Passover when the Israelites were in Egypt. They had to celebrate Passover quickly without taking time to wait for the bread to rise before it could be baked. They needed to eat flat bread and quickly depart. For this reason, leaven came to be thought of as evil. For example, Jesus himself warned his disciples to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that Jesus did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Matthew chapter 16, verse 11 and 12. The disciples clearly understood that Jesus was speaking with them about the dangerous teachings of religious leaders. Now, while leaven is frequently used negatively in the Bible, there is one notable exception. Bread that was brought as a wave offering during Pentecost was required to be leavened. Included in the gifts that each family was instructed to offer to the Lord, they were told, you shall bring from your dwelling places two loaves of bread to be waved and made of two-tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven as firstfruits to the Lord. 
Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 11. Pentecost was celebrated with leavened bread. Now, during Passover, no leaven was to be used. But during Pentecost, people were instructed to use leaven in their bread and linger in the presence of God. Further, the two loaves represented the joining together of Jews and Gentiles into one group. Now, by his death on the cross, Jesus broke the barrier between Jews and Gentiles. Jesus said, I have sheep which are not of this fold. Them I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. John chapter 10 and verse 16. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell on the followers of Jesus, the door was opened for both Jews and Gentiles to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like leaven on the inside of the followers of Jesus. Holy Spirit changes us from the inside out. Holy Spirit helps us to do the impossible with his power and presence. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now, recently I met a man who had severe back pain. I asked him if I could pray for him, and he was glad to have me pray. And as I prayed, his legs began to get hot. We lingered in the presence of Holy Spirit to see what God would do for him. If you have back pain, I want to pray for you. If you can, place your hand where your pain is. I command your back pain to go right now in the name of Jesus. Ligaments alive, ruptured discs be healed. Pulled muscles relax and work properly. I invite you to linger in the presence of Holy Spirit and give space for the leaven of his presence to heal your back. As you've listened to this message, perhaps you identified with the young man in the parable of the mustard seed. You're afraid of what will happen to you when you die. Now, while you have been listening, Jesus planted tiny seeds of faith to believe that he can help you overcome your fear of death. Thank him for dying for you in your place on the cross. Receive him as your savior right now. I command your fear of dying to go now in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, fill each one who has prayed with me with your presence. If you just received a healing or you turn to Jesus for salvation, write to me. And let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.